Hello guys and welcome back to another video from the Jacobs Brothers. Today we're going to be doing backhand drop. A lot of you have requested this online so today we're going to be showing you um, the technique uh, behind playing a backhand drop. So this is a very technical shot and there's quite a few key points you need to learn. So we're going to run through the footwork, the grips and the technique and break it down into small chunks for you so you can go away and learn one or two at a time. So let's show you how it's done. The footwork is going to help you get into a good position to play the backhand drop. It will also help you recover for the next shot that the opponents may hit. Okay, so there's a few key points for this. The first one is you're going to start off with a split drop. The second key point is you're going to then do a chassis towards the corner. The third key point is you're going to turn onto your racket leg and you're going to then try to strike the shuttle before your foot lands. And the fourth key point is a turning and recovery. So let me show you a few times. Split, chassis, turn, hit, recover. Split, chassis, turn, hit, recover. Staying on balance throughout the shot is really important. And it's our core that allows us to do this. So focus on keeping that head up when we're bending the knees and not letting our body collapse. So the grip I'm holding now guys is the bevel grip. This grip will help you in the rear backhand corner. Um, as you can see it's not like a backhand grip. My thumb is actually on the curve of the racket and this will help you because the deeper the shuttle goes into the rear court um, it allows you to get the strings facing towards the net to then hit the shot over. As you can see here I'm holding the bevel grip. When we play backhand in the rear court the grip slightly changes depending where the shuttle is. If it's more to the side of you, it will be more of a backhand and as the grip or as the shuttle slowly creeps behind you, you'll slowly bring the hand and thumb round to that bevel grip and one of the key important things here is that your strings need to always face the net. So for the technique, Despite what you might think and might have been taught, we don't want to start with that elbow high because that's going to restrict our power, especially when we move on to do the clears. We're actually going to have a nice relaxed arm, a nice relaxed grip. So for me, I keep the elbow pointing down. And we're going to keep that arm relaxed so that as we come around, we're going to have a slightly bent elbow. We don't want to be too straight and tense and we don't want to be too cramped. That's not going to allow for a good shot. So we're going to keep that elbow nice and relaxed. We're going to have the wrist cocked back. That's going to allow us to rotate the forearm as we come through as well. And for the hitting action, we're going to keep that shuttle on the strings as long as we can. And we're going to be pulling round with the arm. So I like to think of this a bit like you're stirring a pot. So I call this the stir the pot technique. So we're coming round, hitting the shuttle outside of our body. So let's take a look and see it in action. This routine is great to help you develop your backhand, both your consistency and put into practice those key points you've learned. We want to make sure the feeder is putting you under a little bit of pressure in that backhand corner, so feeding deep and flat. And we want to make sure when we're playing these backhands that they have a little bit of pace on them. They're not too floaty, they're not too soft. We don't want to give our opponent the opportunity to kill the shuttle. You want to break it down a little bit further for maybe those that are new to the backhand I would suggest starting with a single shuttle feed so one at a time giving you the chance to learn from your mistakes and put into practice your key points you're learning and develop them one at a time so for the cross cut drop the footwork and the preparation will stay the same 
The only few different things for this is that you will need to slightly creep round to a panhandle grip as you're hitting cross. And also you want to come round, like my brother said, with stirring the pot, but you want to come round and actually come a bit more out from where the shuttle is. So if the shuttle's here, you need to come out a little bit wider so that you can come round and get the angle to hit cross. If you don't come on the outside of the shuttle, the angle won't be there. It's important for our cross court that we start with the same preparation and just change the grip to play the shot. This is going to mean that our opponent is unable to tell what shot we're going to play until they've seen us hit it. We want to also hit the shuttle a little bit harder because we are hitting across the court which is a slightly further distance. Again, hitting with good pace on our drops.